pleasure to say a few words before the lecture of uh, Jim Watson. As a matter of fact, during the last few years, I had his extremely pleasant task in Naples and then in Costa Rica. So it is the third time we are changing continents. So the next time will be either Africa or Australia. <laughs> Well, I would like to say just a few words about the, what happened before the beginning of the story which Jim Watson is going to present to us. And uh, I want to say that because I was for uh, 10 years the president of the Stazione Zoologica where everything started and it was such a coincidence that it is unbelievable that such things may happen. What happened was the following. Maurice Wilkins went to a meeting. There was a meeting on the protoplasm in Naples at the Stazione Zoologica. That was in 1951. And the first point was that Maurice Wilkins went there to replace somebody else, Professor Randall, who was supposed to be the speaker. In the, in the, the second strange thing was that Maurice Wilkins, who was supposed to talk about the chromatin, he spoke about chromatin, of course, but he said something else. And uh, it is something which is not actually reported in the uh, contra Andrew in the book which came later, but clearly he showed for the first time an X-ray diagram of DNA. And you can see that because Asturi asked the question and it is reported in the book. Uh, he was actually congratulating Wilkins because of the result which had been obtained by Rosalind Franklin. Uh, because he had tried the same thing without success years before. But the real point was another one. That there was a very young visitor, a 23 years old postdoc, who was spending time with the Professor Carter in Copenhagen and who was, happened to be in the audience. And he understood the importance of, the, of that particular diagram. Of course, the problem was to interpret the diagram. But that was the beginning. So a strange coincidence of uh, Jim Watson being present just by chance at a meeting in which somebody replacing somebody else presented something which was not in the program. So it is absolutely astonishing. I'm sure, actually, that if that had not happened, I'm sure that Jim would have known maybe a few months later about that result and get involved because at that time he was one of the rare people who, at least in Europe, who knew something about genetics, about DNA. DNA in uh, European textbooks at that time was the tetranucleotide in the chapter on sugars and polysaccharides. So you can imagine how far we were from the following. So uh, that was the very beginning, and I think the real story uh, will be told you, will be said by uh, Professor Watson himself, and I welcome him, and I'm very happy once more to have said just a few words to introduce him in uh, uh, this beautiful hall. Please, Dr. Watson.
can you hear me? <laughs> it's not working. Okay. So uh, every time I come back to Japan, it seems more uh, more special and unique in a good way. Tokyo is just such a overwhelmingly beautiful city, and we're sitting in the, have rooms in the Imperial Hotel, so it couldn't be couldn't be any nicer. Uh, I thought I would tell the story of how Francis Crick and I found the, the double heating. Sort of interrupted, uh, we're sort of looking at uh, discovery now as part of history. And uh, 